makeup friends and welcome back to the channel or if you're new here then hello and welcome my name is Kara and today is the first day of this work week so I had put up a community post asking you guys some older palettes that you'd like to see or some older products that you'd like to see incorporated into this series and there was quite a big call for some ABH palettes so I have all of my ABH palettes here so I have soft glam I've got the Jackie Ina palette, I have Sultry, and I have, I always forget the name of this one, Primrose. So I thought that I would incorporate all of those into this week's makeup. I did last time, last week's video, I did incorporate a look using Sultry, but it's my favorite of the ABH palettes, so it's not hard pressed to include it this week as well. But there was specific requests for soft glam. So that's what we're going to use today. Foundation and all of that is applied already. Blush is not, highlighter is not. I will do that at the end. For foundation, I am using the Lisa Eldridge Seamless, Seamless Skin Foundation. That is part of my project pan. So I'm going to be using that all throughout this week. Concealer right now is the new one from Urban Decay. I'm testing it out, formulating my thoughts on it. I'm going to use that throughout the week as well, just to really put it to the test. And then for brows, I'm gonna use the Tinted Brow Gel from Kosas this week, and this one is in the shade Dark Brown. So, that is all I've gotta say. I'm running a little bit behind today, so need to just sort of hurry up and get right into it. So here we go. All right, so just a little bit of background if you're new to this series or new to my channel. I do work at a law firm in an office setting. I own the business, so I don't have to worry about like my boss telling me what I can and cannot wear in terms of makeup. But nonetheless, depending on what I have on the schedule on any given day, that really dictates how I do my makeup for the day. So if I have a lot of in-person meetings or if I have a court date, FYI, I'm a lawyer. I forgot to mention that. Um, then I will do a bit more subdued, a little bit more on the neutral side, but I do still like to incorporate color where I can. I will say in editing this video, I've realized, A, I've placed the shadows in the exact same place throughout all three looks, just using different colors, but ultimately there are two looks that look very similar. So I had put up a community post today, uh, today is Saturday asking what color should I challenge myself to include in every look next week and I'm getting some good responses back to that but somebody left a comment suggesting Valentine's Day makeup they were surprised that I hadn't listed pink and honestly I just hadn't thought about the fact that Valentine's Day is coming up so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a lot of Valentine's Day look inspired makeup for this upcoming week so that I'll post that next weekend because the following week I will be away. So the week of actual uh, Valentine's Day, I will be away with my kids and my husband for a few days. So I won't be working and won't be filming videos. So in order to get some Valentine's inspiration up, I'm going to have to do that at work this upcoming week so that I can post it next weekend. Anyways, that's the plan. So I will incorporate the look, whichever one wins out on the poll as well, the color, uh, but I am going to do Valentine's Day looks for this upcoming work week. And I'm actually really excited about that. Any excuse to wear pinks and reds, I will take with both hands and run with it. So for this week though, um, I only worked three days this week. So I had booked one day off because I had a surgical follow-up and I know I need a little bit of touch-up work to some of the incision sites and whatnot. And I wasn't sure if she was going to do that during that follow-up. So I wanted to make sure that my calendar was clear so that I wasn't, you know, last minute canceling on anybody. Um, turns out, and I can do, well, I'll probably do it on my other channel, do an update on my other channel, but she did not do any touch-ups there, but I will likely be going in probably in the fall for basically a second go-round, um, just a little bit more tweaking from what I had done this past September. Again, if you're new and you have no idea what I'm talking about, I had a breast reduction and excess skin removal. Um, over the last three years, I've lost 115 pounds. There's a whole series of videos on that on my channel. So the weight loss, while it has greatly improved my health, has certainly left its ravages on my body. And so these uh, procedures that I'm having done are just kind of dealing with the aftermath. So getting back into the makeup... 
Because I only worked three days, I had intended to include sultry in a look for this week, but ultimately I did not. Um, I hadn't planned on taking the second day off, but the opportunity presented itself, and so I took it. Uh, being the boss has that perk. But for this day here, this was Tuesday, I had an in-person meeting, and I knew that it was an older gentleman. I knew we were dealing with a prenuptial agreement or marriage contract. And I just, I, I'm playing to my audience, right? So this is why I've kept it very soft and very neutral for this look. Um, I like when I look at my calendar in advance and can remember what I have on the schedule for the next day or, you know, the next couple of days uh, so that I can plan accordingly. So that was the whole thought behind this particular look. You can make soft glam the palette quite dramatic, um, especially with the inclusion of that black shade that's in there, but I just wanted it to be very nice and light. And then for my blush today, as you can see, I used MAC Melba. I don't reach for this one very often, and I don't know why, because it's really, really pretty, and it's a very natural looking color on me, like even though it is quite peachy, I just find that it's very flattering on my skin tone. So. Sometimes in like editing these videos, I get to really see what the makeup looks like on me. And it just reminds me like reach for Melba more often because it's absolutely beautiful. So then I'm reaching into Flexitarian. We are getting so close to the end of this. My goodness, I cannot wait for it to be done. I mean, I love it. Don't get me wrong. I love it. But the, the fatigue is real. I've been going hard on this one for like 14 months now. And that's not to say that I won't reach for other highlighters, but predominantly it's this one, and I'm, I'm getting a little tired of it. Then to meld everything together and sort of take the harsh edges off of the highlight, I'm going in with the Chantecaille setting powder, or sorry, finishing powder. Wasn't a huge fan of it at first, but once I figured out which brush to use with it, it was a bit of a game changer. This is the Il Maquillage foundation brush, and it is perfect for blending out the powders on your face. And I still can't get my lips in frame when I'm doing these videos. Like, I apologize. I just, I don't even think about it because I'm not interacting with the camera. I just have it running. I just completely forget to get myself into frame. But at any rate, there was the look for the first day in the office. And then I'll throw in the outfit here. So just a black skirt, tall boots, and then a shirt from H&M. And then we are on to day two. And this was kind of a, a, an exciting yet stressful day. So I had a court matter scheduled. This, unfortunately for my client, this is her third go round in court with the same, basically the same issues and certainly the same person. Uh, and she is absolutely lovely. She is a client that I just like, I can see myself being friends with, but I just feel so badly for her for the situation she's in. So I knew I had a court date going on. It was just Zoom. So I basically look like a glorified potato on my webcam at any event, but I wanted to be put together and professional looking. And as well, that same day, our new associate started with us. So while she'll be on a, a hybrid schedule, working part-time from home and then part-time in the office, on this day, she was going to be in the office and she was going to be sitting in on that court matter with me. So I had a lot going on. And of course, it's kind of nerve wracking. I mean, I'm sure it's obviously more nerve wracking for her to start a new job, but um, it's nerve wracking on my end too, because I want to make sure that I'm, you know, setting a good example of what our office and our firm is all about. I want to make sure that everybody's welcoming and in, in embracing her and all of that. And then as well, she's fairly new to the practice of law. She does have some experience, but I also want to be a good mentor. So there was a lot of different things going on in my mind, but uh, at any rate, I, I could use that as an excuse as to why I'm just doing the exact same eye shape and the placement of the shadows, but that's not the excuse. It's just, I've said this in other videos, I just find that this style of makeup is flattering on my eyes. I will do halo eyes every now and then. Hell, I'll even do a cut crease from time to time, Not never for work, but I will do them. They just don't look as good on my eyes, and I haven't done my Botox in almost a year. I think it's been about nine or ten months at this point. I may go back. I probably will go back. It's just not 
a priority right now and it is quite expensive and we have other things that we can prioritize our finances for. Um, but the whole point of me saying that, aside from there's the wrinkles on my forehead, but my left eye tends to droop a little bit more. So they're not symmetrical to begin with. And I find that without the Botox, which does help to like lift the brow and sort of even everything out, making certain shapes on my eyes becomes that much more of a challenge because I have to learn how to do it in two different styles because my eyes are fairly asymmetric, especially without that Botox. So that is the reason why you're going to see me do the same sort of placement of shadows. But having said that, there's no end of color combinations. So even though the placement might look the same, I find that the um, color combinations are where the fun truly is. But for this look, the reason I went in with this shade, I wanted something a little bit more coppery on the lids to sort of contrast with the green of my dress. And I think I accomplished that here. We've got a nice little coppery shade, plays nicely with those plummy pinky tones, which as I've said a million times, really do bring out the green in my eyes. So this is a look that I would do over and over again because I just think that it's very flattering on me and I really like these fiery kind of tones. And then I just wanted to brighten things up a little bit on the inner corner. I don't know that I really accomplished it with adding this shade. It's really not all that obvious. It did add a little bit of a lighter sparkle, but not an awful lot, like not particularly noticeable. So it was a step that I definitely could have saved for myself. Speaking of saving steps, this is what I forgot to mention at the beginning. I did not use an eyelid primer this week. Instead, I just brought over a little bit of the concealer across my lid just to help uh, mask the discoloration and also just to act as an eyeshadow primer. I didn't find that any of my shadows creased throughout the week. I didn't find that the um, shimmer shadows disappeared over the course of the day, so I'm quite pleased with this concealer, to be honest. I think it wears really nicely. I think it looks really nice. I may, well, you know what, I'm probably not going to do a dedicated review on just the concealer, but I do plan on doing um, like bite-sized reviews soon of the new makeup that I have been testing out in the last few weeks. There's not a lot, but there's some. And oh my goodness, these blushes that come in this Primrose palette, they are heckin pigmented like a little goes a long way and this is the lighter of the two I cannot wear the deeper one as a blush I have to wear it as an eyeshadow because it's just too deep on me and there you can see me see me looking at myself and I know if I look in the mirror with all these studio lights on and I feel clownish in that lighting I know that once I go into normal light it's going to be like 10 times worse so I knew I had to tone it down so I took a little bit more of that Chantecaille finishing powder and just sort of evened everything out. If it had been a little bit deeper than what it is here, I would have gone back in with my foundation brush and just what was ever left over on the bristles. I just would have stippled it across my cheeks just to mask it a little bit more, but the powder did the job for me, so I was happy about that. And then this was part of my Beautylish Lucky Bag, um, and there's no, I threw the outer packaging out and didn't pay attention because I figured there'd be a sticker somewhere on the lipstick, but there wasn't. So I took my best guess after looking at the shade descriptions online. It's a very, very comfortable lipstick, um, but I have no idea what the actual shade name is. So there is my outfit of the day. We had to do it outside because we were just running late. I've got my court binder, my Red Bull, good to go. And then this was Friday, and Friday was atrocious in terms of weather. Oh my goodness, it was like, it felt like minus 35. It wasn't snowy, but it was so windy that it looked like it was snowing. Like it was just whiteout conditions. I actually closed the highway down. All of my staff that like are out of town, I just told them like safety is paramount. Stay home, be safe. So we were basically a skeleton crew. It worked out. I was supposed to have an in-person uh, consultation that day, but she couldn't actually get out of her driveway because of the snow. She lived a little bit more in a rural area, so we just ended up doing it by phone. And my newest associate, I just set up a Zoom link so that she could participate that way. Isn't technology a wonderful thing? We got a Zoom meeting with call on speaker and me sitting in my office, but... Um, at any rate, I knew that we were going to try to change it to a Zoom meeting, so 
I felt that I could go a little bit bolder with the color, but this look ends up looking very similar to the previous days. Unfortunately, I just didn't think about it at the time that I was doing this or else I would have reached for a different color. But be that as it may, we will continue to ramble through while I'm applying this. Um, yeah, so this day, I just had the one consultation, but oh my goodness, that's going to be a very interesting matter. Normally when I'm doing consultations, like I always take notes while I'm doing them, but it's usually like two, maybe three pages of notes. With this particular one, it was seven pages of notes, seven full pages, uh, plus my associate took some notes as well. So there was a lot to unpack in there, but I think we've got a good handle on what's going to happen and where we're going to go. And this particular person seems like a very reasonable person to work with. So I'm excited that she has retained me and I'm excited to assist her through the mess that she's currently dealing with. So that was it for the Friday. We ended up leaving a little bit early simply because the weather was just so bad and the roads were getting really brutal. I didn't have a ton of actual work to do, um, but a lot of behind the scenes administrative stuff. So took care of everything that I needed to, never stopped moving once while we, we were in the office, but uh, I have earned my weekend. So it's weeks like this where, you know, if I can take the two days off and nobody's like, none of my work is getting left or anything like that, no clients are left waiting uh, on me to do something, I will take those two days and I try very hard not to feel guilty about it. I mean, the one day I was spent I think I was at the hospital for at least an hour or so just waiting and having my appointment and it was a very thorough and very good follow-up but the other day that I had off that's where I spend time working on some videos I will do like a Zwift bike ride um, I try to do my long rides on those days because the kids aren't here Barry's not here I'm not tying up space for anybody I'm not ignoring anybody it's just me in the house so I try to do my long rides on those days and I also just try to use that time to just decompress and relax. Again, because I don't have my kids here and I don't have my husband here, I can just kind of be selfish with my time and whatever I want to watch on the television, I can, and just try to make the most of it so that when I'm in the office, I'm not burned out, I'm 100% focused, and I can do all the work that needs to be done in a compressed amount of time. And then later on that night, um, I had to have some serious conversations with, uh, my husband walked into the room, uh, with a family member. Um, she's actually my aunt. My mother resides with her, and she's providing a lot of care for her. Um, but we had to have some serious conversations because my mom is on a decline. She is seeing family members who have been dead for many, many years, including her own father. And I remember my dad did the same thing in the weeks leading up to his passing, so... We don't know, obviously, nobody knows the timeline. She's not suffering any sort of physical illness, but she is 90 years old, turning 91 next month. So, yeah, we've had to have some serious conversations about what's going to happen when her time comes, but we will deal with that when it does. So here is the outfit. Barry made me <laughs> do blue steel, and then the normal pictures he took were all fuzzy, so here we are. Anyways, be a decent human being. Bye. Bye.